Hi there. It can be really useful to be able to write a quadratic function that has certain characteristics. A good strategy for doing this is to sketch what we know and then think about how we can put that information into an equation form. So we want to think about the form that we can use. Remember we have three different forms for quadratics, vertex form, intercept form, and standard form. Standard form generally won't be very useful, but the other two can be helpful, and we want to think about which one would be most helpful. Then we can write our equation given the information that we know, but typically we'll also need to think sort of separately about the a value. That might be a second step. So as we look at some examples, make sure you focus your attention on that step in the process, finding the a value. In this first example, we're given information about the vertex and also the y-intercept. So that tells us about a second point on the graph. The fact that we're given information about the vertex signals that vertex form is probably going to be the most useful. So I want to fill in values for A, for H, and for K to create my quadratic function. Well, obviously, since we know the vertex, I can fill in that information. I have Y equals A, X minus 3 squared plus 5. We'll place the vertex at 3, 5. Then the second bit of information is that the x-intercept is at 2. So 0, 2 is going to be a point on the graph. And that tells me a couple things, right? Knowing that this is the vertex, I know that my quadratic function is going to have to slope downward. So my a value has to be negative. To find out specifically what the a value is, we can use the coordinates of this point. So 0, 2 means that if I plug in 0 for x into my formula, the y value should equal 2. And solving this equation allows us to find the value of a. So subtracting 5 and also squaring this value gives me negative 3 equals 9a, and then a has to equal negative 3 over 9, or more simply, negative 1 third. So we can put that all together to get our final formula for the function. We have y equals negative 1 third, x minus 3 squared plus 5. In the second example, we're given information about the range and the x-intercepts. So knowing the x-intercepts is going to make intercept form the easier and more accessible form for this. Recall that intercept form is y equals a x minus p times x minus q, where p and q are the x-intercepts. So I can take those two values and plug them into the intercept form y equals a times x minus 1 times x minus 3. That gives me almost what I need, except I need to find the a value, right? So we have this sort of second step of the process. I need to figure out what a equals. Well, that's where this other bit of information comes in. The range goes from negative infinity to 10. Well, you might recall that this maximum value of the range is going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. And so the vertex has to be something with a 10 in the y-coordinate position. And that something, of course, is going to be the x value of the axis of symmetry, which is right between the two x-intercepts. It's the average of the two x-intercepts. So the axis of symmetry we can get from those x-intercepts 1 plus 3 divided by 2 is 2, you know, 4 over 2. So that gives me my x-coordinate of the vertex. So the vertex is up here at 2 comma 10. So again, I know I have a parabola that opens downward, a u-shaped parabola that opens downward. And it's going to be very narrow because you know, the x-intercepts are very close together and the, the y-intercept is relatively far from those. 
So what we can do is a similar process to what we did before. Now that I have this second point, now that I know that the vertex is at 2 comma 10, I can plug that in. If I plug in an x value of 2, so I get 2 minus 1 and 2 minus 3. If I plug that in for x, the y value has to equal positive 10. If I solve for a, I end up with a times positive 1 times negative 1 on the right hand side. So 10 equals negative a, so a must equal negative 10. And putting that all together, I get an equation for the quadratic y equals negative 10 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So it's important to be sensitive to what we know. In this case, we know the x-intercepts, which tells me that intercept form is going to be the easier, more accessible form to use. As the process gets going, though, we do find the coordinates of the vertex. And so we could alternatively use vertex form. So another form for this parabola would be y equals a times x minus 2 squared plus 10. And then we could use one of the x-intercepts to find the value for a. So taking the one on the left, I want to get a value of 0 if I plug in an x value of 1. And if I do that, I end up with the equation negative 10 equals a. And so we get the same a value, which is what we should do. The a value is always the same between the three forms. We get the same a value for the vertex form. y equals negative 10 x minus 2 squared plus 10. And to check those, we could multiply both of those out, and we should get the same standard form. So if I multiply out this expression, I would get x squared minus 4x plus 3, all of that times negative 10. In the vertex form expression, I need to multiply out this binomial. I need to square the binomial, so I get negative 10, x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 10. And both of those expressions, if we distribute the negative 10, both of those expressions simplify to the same standard form equation, negative 10x squared plus 40x minus 30. So since we're talking about the same quadratic function, the three forms that are possible for that specific parabola should be equivalent. They should work out to be the same standard form expression. So I encourage you to take a moment and think about this third example. We're given information about a minimum value, and we're given information about one of the x-intercepts. So create a sketch, think about which form you want to use, and then try to put that information together to create an equation for the function. I'll describe a solution in a separate video.